Greetings everyone, the good tonight here today for a review on the Tokyo Motori Glock 19. So this guy came out here not too many months ago, still relatively new, took many, many months, hell, even years of development for it to come out, and it is relatively different from the Tokyo Motori Glock 17, which was really, really popular now. Obviously it's a bit shorter on both the uh, grip side and the magazine side, so if you got smaller hands, it's going to be a bit easier for you to grip. There's a bit of a little pinky off on the mag wall here, but yeah, you get the general idea. Well, I guess we could put a bit more forward. It works out, so it's a comfy little gun. And yeah, so we got our magazine here. This one holds 22 rounds, as opposed to the original 17 mags, which I still have a copy of, that hold it up, that held, ah, hold it, really? That held 25, so if you put one of those in there, you'll see there's a bit of a space, and that's where your grip was a bit larger and everything there, so. Fun little fact, so the 19, obviously a bit more concealable, more useful for uh, everyday civilian use, but it's compact size is overall useful nonetheless. So, the key thing is, the thing I was mostly concerned about, the thing I was constantly, constantly thinking about was, well, the Tokyo Motori Glock 17 fit in the Glock 20 holster, because the slide was too wide. Well, this is the original Glock 17 22. You can't really read it, but it's there. 17 20, er, yeah, the 1719 holster. So this was designed for the Glock 17, Glock 19. And, well, it fits. <laughs> so the big thing was I could not get the 17 to fit in here for the life of me, which is why I needed the Glock 20 holster. And, well, this one actually fits the 1719 holster like it was designed to do. So clearly the frame must be a bit thinner and is not as long, and it actually fits. So... If you're wondering what Safari Land holster to get, this one actually fits into the 17. Which made me glad I didn't get rid of my 17 when... Holster, or the 17 holster when I had the Glock 17 and had to get the 20, because now I've got a holster that fits the 19. So, if through some miracle you're able to get a hold of a Glock 19 in the States, I know there's a lot of uh, nonsense going on over there. If you get a 19 and you want to use the Safari Land holster, you're going to want a actual 17 holster for your 19, so that's just how that works. And I can't slide this in here because I haven't had a handgun in so long and I can't see it. But yeah, basically got my setup going. We're going to test out some shooting here as soon as I can get this thing to seat. There we go. So, holster down here. We got ours to clear our IFAC just fine. Even when we were twisted, you can still pull that to the side, so that was one of the main concerns I've always had with handguns. I can't get the handgun mags to sit on the belt because I'm short or some nonsense, but we have them up here on the plate carrier and they fit nice, comfy, and just out of the way of the arm. They actually sit pretty flush and they're not as uncomfortable as I thought they'd be. I'm sure over time they'd probably get some bruising going on, but we're not even going to be using that many mags to begin with, so we've got a target here. You can't see. It's already been shot up by the Mark 18, was it, Mod Zero gas blow bag we got, which is the M4 CQB MWS, whatever you want to call it. What we're going to do basically right now is we're going to test out the new little roller system and everything they have in the 19 and see how well it works in shooting. So we move our glasses and we move on to our tactical helmet, airframe style, with again magic roll ribbons for improved accuracy. Let's get turn this on over here. There we go. And we are ready to see what this thing can do. So, if you guys are ready with me, we're already going to round chambered because we're doing, well, not concealed carry, but in general, it's good to have round chambered. So, we're going to see how this thing cycles and how it shoots. So, let's begin. So, pretty nice. You can see a bit of a different sound than you might be used to with a 17. I don't know how well the mic's going to pick it up, but pretty nice. There's a really I can't really explain it, there's a different feel to the way it's shooting altogether over the 17, but something really unique. I think it's less cooling in the mag or something. I'm not sure, but it's got a nice little kick to it, so we're going. A bit of slowdown right there, we still got a few rounds, but you can see it's going pretty nicely. So we draw. A few rounds and we draw. There we go, we're out. Swap mags. Put the 17 mag, let's make sure they shoot. I got two rounds in each mag, so. Not bad. Not bad at all. We'll grab our original mag a little here. So yeah, that's pretty nifty. 
gonna turn these off. All my mandating shooting is now done. I am free, but yeah, actually, it's got a far different feel than the 17. I'm sure it's part of all the new, unique, and upgraded internals they got going on here. Actually, is this gonna fit? Yeah, 19's fit in there. So we'll pop this open real quick. And that's the one thing I did notice is this doesn't slide out as easily as the other one. You're actually gonna give it a little love tap in the back and then drop it violently on the floor. It's okay. Tokyo Motor doesn't use the uh, cheaper plastics, but yeah. So, look in here. I'm gonna put this down. So I don't see anything too crazy with the uh, trigger mechanism or anything over there. That all looks pretty simple and standard. As far as the internals here, there is a very large, as you might notice, this is probably the key thing that's making the difference, is this massive rubber buffer looking thing here. That was not included on the original models. They just had your little normal tab thing, so. It's a really unique buffer. It looks like there's some modification. Oh yeah, actually. So I actually haven't popped this open yet, so. This is this is where we get more into the first impressions than the uh, review portion. So we pop this open. Look at that. So that is not at all the little front nub hop-up adjustment they used to have. That is something completely new and different, so. There's your years of research right there. Whatever it is, it looks fantastic. It also looks like there's a smaller little uh, valve for the loader that's actually got a bit trimmed out of the bottom so it uh, f looks like it helps it feed a bit better but yeah so obviously it's not just a smaller 17 as many of the other companies have opted to make this one actually has some very uh, unique different modifications that overall make the gun operate smoother and uh, a bit more simple other than having to slap the back of the uh, magazine to get it free. But yeah, so that's really nifty. I do enjoy that very, very much. It's got a lot different of a feel. There's a completely different we worked internals and the hop and everything's fine. Our target has been destroyed with a combination of M4 and Glock fire. When I did the initial hip fire portion, that's where these two rounds impacted, so. Moral of the story is, I, uh, the more you train, the more accurate and better you're going to be, especially under stressful situations, and uh, yeah. I've um, shot this thing once, so hey, don't judge me. I'll, um, I definitely need to get a lot more practice in. It's hard to do in a tiny apartment in the middle of Okinawa, so hopefully we'll get some actual range time in, preferably some two-way range time, airsoft-wise. I'm uh, planning on coming back alive from those engagements, but yeah, so... It's fun. It shoots really nice. I uh, should probably have it up on your camera. And yeah, definitely get a Glock 17 Safari Line holster if you're going to be using it. As far as trademarks go, you have your little Tokyo Motori engraving here. Pretty standard. All the externals look pretty much the same. I mean, I think whatever finish they use looks a bit better because on my 17 and stuff, you holster and unholster that a few times, you start getting marks all up on the slide and everything. And so far, I've been, well, one, making sure this holster even works. So I've been going through that quite a bit. And yeah. What do you know? There's no marks on this. So I think they might be using something more like the Charakote or whatever thing they used on the M4 I managed to purchase. So yeah, that came across really nicely. So yeah, because even this one, this one's got some age to it. Actually, it's not the same finish. It's something different than what they were using on the 17s, though. It's definitely holding up way better. So yeah, there's a massive rework going on here. And actually, if you look at these sights, I don't know if you've ever seen the front sight post with the Tokyo Motor Glock 17, but it didn't have that little hole in the top with the screw coming through, so... It uses different sights, probably because it's also a more streamlined, more realistic looking uh, frame for the top here. The slide doesn't have the same thickness that the 17 had that made it obnoxious to find a holster for, so... Thank you, Tokyo Motor for taking in the, one of the key complaints you had from a lot of people and getting us weapons that could be used with appropriate holsters so that we can do appropriate training. So, yeah, training with 6mm caseless subsonic munitions has been significantly improved, especially when you consider the price of real ammunition. But, yeah, so that's our uh, little upgrade here. And it really does fit perfectly in the 17. Like, I'm impressed. I was so used to the 17 holster being so slim compared to the 17 that this is like, of all the takeaways outside the cool internals and stuff, getting yourself a good holster is key. So now we have a good idea of a 17 working holster. So 
I'm really excited about that. Like, you guys don't even know. Like, a lot of people were turning away from Tokyo Motor because a lot of their gun sizes weren't perfect one-to-ones. That's why people are going over to VFC. But now you've got this really nifty upgrade here, and it makes a world of a difference. So, if you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up. This thing wasn't... Well, it definitely wasn't as cheap as the 17, but I can see why the price is definitely different with the complete different reworked internals and whatnot. So I'm probably going to just keep the stock. It's fantastic. And what's great is, being a 19, you can stuff it in your pants, like so, and put a shirt over it. Obviously, it's not going to look as normal in tactical gear with a plate carrier, but because of its smaller frame, you can tuck it away much easier than a 17. Yada yada, still not as comfortable as a 42, but you have more ammo than a revolver. So, yeah, that's basically the overall review I have here. This thing draws really smooth, too. But yeah, you're not really showing any signs of wear and tear just yet. Who knows, maybe we'll make this thing look like one of Chris Costa's guns after we literally beat the life out of it. So, cheers everyone, hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Stay chivalrous, and uh, keep your head warm. Cheers.